Hello, OpenXML developers. This is Eric White. This screencast is a quick overview of the new tagged 2.6 release of the OpenXML SDK on the master branch at GitHub. First thing you'll need to do is clone the repo. Git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash office dev slash open dash xml dash sdk. After you have cloned the open xml sdk, you'll want to get into the master branch. By default, when you clone the open xml sdk, it puts you in the vnext branch, and that way, if you're interested in watching the development of the open XML SDK in real time, you're free to do so and also get the latest features. We try not to put anything into vNext that isn't good to have. This screencast though is dealing with the master branch of the open XML SDK, not vNext branch of the open XML SDK. First thing let's do is let's open up the open XML SDK solution with Visual Studio. Visual Studio 2013 works just fine. Also the community edition of Visual Studio 2015 works as well. First thing to do, build the solution. And there we can see our unit tests. We have 713 unit tests. As of this point in time, we expect this number to go up over time. We can click run all. I'll skip forward to the point where all of these tests complete. It only takes about a couple of minutes to run all tests. And there, all 713 tests passed. Let's collapse these over here. So what do we have here? We have six projects in this solution. First of all, we have document format dot open XML. This is the default version of the open XML SDK library. We have another version of the Open XML SDK library over here, which is the Open XML SDK that is built with the system.io.packaging namespace that's in the Windows base assembly, hence the WB. As many of you know, there is a bug in the system.io.packaging in the Windows base assembly such that it's not advisable to use those classes in that assembly in a certain set of types of applications, .NET applications. For instance, you don't want to use it in a web front end. You don't want to use it in a multi-threaded high performance application. You don't want to use it in a SharePoint application, which is essentially a web front end application. You don't want to use it in certain scenarios in cloud computing. And there's detailed analysis that needs to go into which of those scenarios you want to use it for. But the other issue is that there are certain cloud platforms that don't have the isolated storage namespace available and so therefore you can't even compile using this particular assembly. In those scenarios, we want to use this version of the OpenXML SDK which links with this version of system.io.packaging right here. This is an open source implementation of system.io.packaging. This is the same implementation as is in the CoreFX framework. In other words, the new open source .NET framework that is coming out as we speak or shortly or whenever it does come out. Um, 
there are a set of X unit tests for the system.ao.packaging implementation. They are right here and these run as well. We want to know straight away if system.ao.packaging isn't correct in some fashion. So we should have X unit tests for system.ao.packaging. Now getting back up to the X unit tests for the OpenXML SDK, we can see two directories here for tests. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention is the source files that are in this document format.openxml.wb project, they're linked to the source files up here in document format.openxml. So these are exactly the same source file using the linking mechanism that you can use when you set up a project. And that way, any changes to the document format.openxml library will also be reflected in the document format.openxml.wb library. And same thing is true with the tests. We have a set of X unit tests for the OpenXML SDK in this project. And here we have the same set of tests, except that they link with this version of the Open XML SDK. And these tests are also source code linked to the tests up here. So any changes that we make in the tests up here, they'll be reflected in the tests that run on the Windows base version of the Open XML SDK. So what do we see in the test explorer in this situation? Let's take a look here. What we see is we see each test for the open XML SDK listed twice. And that's because we see that test as it comes from this test assembly. And we also see that test as it comes from this test assembly. And this is a very good thing. This means that the implementation of system.io.packaging that we have right here is highly conformant with the system.io.packaging that is in the Windows base assembly that we get linked to with this version of the OpenXML SDK. And this means that we can have high confidence that the system.io.packaging that I implemented in the last year has the identical semantics and behavior to the old system.io.packaging with the exception that the 10 megabyte bug is gone. This is the bug where it would farm out data to isolated storage and then isolated storage was completely not thread safe and in fact not multiple process safe. It had very odd race conditions that would cause weird exceptions to be thrown very randomly at very infrequent levels of occurrence. And that was really a bad bug. So we've replaced it with this version of system.io.packaging and we have a set of tests that run on the OpenXML SDK using the new system.io.packaging. And we also, for validation, we link with the old Windows base system.io.packaging and we run the same set of tests on that and they all must pass in order to see 713 tests pass over here. So there we have it. We've looked at the Open XML SDK solution. It has these six projects in it. And I've explained what the purpose of each of these six projects are. If you are using the Open XML SDK in most scenarios, then I recommend that you use this version of the Open XML SDK. It's very rare situations that you would ever want to use the Windows base version of the OpenXML SDK. And those people who have requirements on that, they know who they are. It has to do with digital signatures and encryption. That's where you have to revert back to the old Windows base 
and the system.io.packaging in it. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. Thanks for watching. See you later.